So conditions in asylums were, I think, mixed. Um, in some places, um, they they did indeed give people a refuge and and um, the notion of work therapy because institutions were primarily the machinery of the institution was primarily um, provided by patients. Patients did the laundry, patients did the cooking, patients grew the vegetables, patients did the gardening. These were, and that was all considered part of their therapy. And for some people in emotional stress, that might have actually been, um, that might have been a not, like a reasonable life. Um, but there were many, many things that I think that happened in institutions that would make, that would horrify us today and would greatly upset us if we thought that someone we cared about was being subject to those those kinds of treatments. Um, solitary confinement, um, over incredible overcrowding, particularly by the 1950s when institutional populations in the mental health world were at their peak in Canada. Um, uh, treatment that we would consider in brutal and senseless today, things like lobotomies were pra practiced in certain parts of Canada. Um, sterilization, sexual sterilization of men and of women was um, not uncommon in institutional populations and in fact it was the law in Alberta and British Columbia um, for a big chunk of the 20th century. Even if it wasn't on the law books in other parts of Canada, it was practiced amongst institutionalized populations. Um, so there's a lot of pieces of that picture of the madhouse which are, are was in direct opposition to the concept of human rights as we know it today. Um, and there were many, many things that happened in those institutions which I think that we should be very ashamed of as a society.